On the 14th of May 2016, a large group of old Ormanburians, their friends and families, visited the Trolleybus Museum at Sandtoft near Doncaster. One of the attractions was that the museum has no fewer than three operational trolleybuses from the former Huddersfield fleet. What's more, one of the trolleybuses was once owned by two of those present who had bought it while they were still pupils at King James's Grammar School. I attended King James Grammar School in Armbury from 1960 and uh, I became very interested in the trolleybus system in Huddersfield because I had to travel on them every day from Far Town right across the town to Armbury. Um, and uh, two of my fellow pupils at the time, David Beach and Trevor Longbottom, um, we, got, we all got together, the three of us, and decided to start a fund to purchase a trolleybus. So we started raising funds, I suppose, in about 1964, because we, we were hoping that some of the older generation would, would show an interest in, in preserving one or two of the vehicles, but nobody seemed to be doing anything about it. So as sort of um, teenage lads at King James's, we started collecting money and got publicity in the in the examiner and we ran a tour of the town in the trolleybus and basically that set the ball rolling and we ended up with a society with about 120 members I suppose and by 1968 we'd raised enough funds to purchase one of the trolleybuses at what was then the scrap value which was 120 pounds which sounds like nothing nowadays but to us uh, basically teenagers living on pocket money it was a huge sum of money at that time. It's been at Santoft uh, or it's been based at Santoft for um, well since 1970 um, and it's uh, one of the um, museum's uh, most um, used uh, trolleybuses uh, uh, and it's uh, and uh, two years ago it was uh, taken to Swindon to be fully repainted and uh, reupholstered inside so it really is a, a good looking uh, vehicle. So we kept the trolleybus in the archway down Viaduct Street for a time and uh, we were able to take it on a tow down to Reading uh, in the autumn of 1968 and ran a tour of the remaining trolleybus routes in Reading and then a month later had the same experience in Bournemouth where they also still had a few routes surviving um, and so it was a very well travelled trolleybus and then returned it north back to the arch and at that point, the uh, gentleman Mike Dare was investing in the land here at Sandtoft. And 631 was one of the first trolleybuses to move to Sandtoft Museum as soon as the depot was ready to take it. Since when the trolleybus has been undercover all the time, it hasn't really spent any time out of doors, it's been repainted, it's in good running order one of the most reliable trolleybuses at the museum. Um, there are also two other Huddersfield trolleybuses here, that's uh, number 619, which was bought by a private consortium of people, and uh, number 541, which was presented to the National Trolleybus Association in 1964, um, and after a long period of being parked outside, uh, it was brought back to Santoft and eventually restored. Um, so all those three vehicles can be seen today, two of them will be running I think. The visit brought back many memories. Sometime in the 1950s, and I, I don't know how it was, I got talking to him. This was when I was at Almondbury of course and uh, I explained I was the secretary of the School Transport Society 
and would it be possible to have a look at inside Great Northern Street? And of course he said yes. And he laid on this evening visit, which we, we went from the school, we went to Great Northern Street, he took us all round trolleybuses being uh, repaired and at that time the pre-war carriers were being rebodied. So Huddersfield Corporation themselves renovated the chassis and uh, then the chassis went away to Leeds, the rows to have new bodies fitted. So we saw all this work going on in Great Northern Street, absolutely unmissable. We went underneath trolley buses, looking at the chassis, you know, something that you just, just never, never, an opportunity like that would never present itself again. And then we all had a, a ride on a trolley bus going to Longroy Bridge Depot. We were shown all around Longroy Bridge Depot. It really was uh, something totally memorable. Well, um, I was born about the same time as the introduction to uh, uh, trolleybuses in in Huddersfield. Um, I was brought up. I was brought up in in Berry Brow, and uh, the nearest transport we had at that time was walking up to Newsham uh, Church to. Uh, uh, catch the catch the tram there, and uh, I think it must be about 1937 when the uh, trolleybus uh, started to uh, not only run to Newsham Church but uh, extended down to Newsham uh, Newsham South. Um, we lived right by the terminus there and uh, we, it used to uh, back on to uh, reverse on to Caldercliffe Road uh, to, uh, to turn round and um, when it was coming into its terminus um, we used to just jump off the back of the uh, bus right by, by our, <coughs> our gate. Yeah, one thing I remember about Huddersfield, that Huddersfield Cine Club made a film called Ducks and Skates, and it was about a day in the life of a trolleybus driver. And I remember this vividly, and I thought, I'll never be able to see that again. And <clears throat> about 20 years ago, I bought the online video of Huddersfield trolleybuses. And lo and behold, in the middle of that is this film by the Huddersfield Cine Club. On arrival, drivers would first sign on and then collect their running board. Next, they would team up with their conductor or conductress. Most drivers had a regular mate and the pair would be assigned to the same duty. Jimmy Sykes, who was a relatively recent employee, collects his metal ticket box, which contained a ticket machine, spare tickets and a way bill. He already has his leather cash bag. At the output board, they confirm their turn of duty, their departure time and their allotted vehicle. The star of the film had entered service on the 1st of January 1949 and formed part of two batches of new vehicles delivered during 1947 to 49. 541 to 592 were 30 foot long 70 seaters with Park Royal bodies on Sunbeam MS2 chassis. And that 
to me, I, I, I still have that. And about once a year I play it and it brings back terrific memories of Huddersfield. I did uh, just mention earlier about the postal bus and uh, uh, this used to be instructions that uh, um, at, at home that I got to be in bed by the time the uh, 916 postal bus had gone. And my bed was right under the window and I could pull the curtain back to one side to, uh, to, to watch uh, what was going on. And uh, uh, I used to get uh, people waving to me off the uh, top deck of the bus when it was passing to, to go uh, in, in, into town, uh, which uh, was uh, rather amusing. After everyone had assembled, it was time for Bruce Lake from the museum to give an informal talk about the origins of the museum and its exhibits. And then there was the opportunity to view the museum and some of the many trolleybuses on display. It was time for something that everyone had come for, a ride on one of the Huddersfield trolleybuses. <laughs> Hold tight, please. There's still time to look at some of the other exhibits. Or maybe just have a final cup of tea. It was a sad day for the citizens of Huddersfield when their trolleybuses were finally withdrawn from service in 1968. But thanks to the Trolleybus Museum, its dedicated team and its many supporters, the memory of trolleybuses lives on. Yeah.